Francis, you're in the shot. I know. And action. How is that, man? It's horrible. Hey, let me try. Too much syrup or something. Is there something wrong? Yes, this yes, is Yes, this is, this is garbage. I want to feed it to it's my cat. Gross. I'm sorry, oh, what man. What is it? It's disgusting. Taste it. It's soda. It's not soup. No, I don't it's need gross. It's gross. It. Well, well, the health people it. are going to condemn this. Rest don't pay for it. Horrible. I wouldn't pay Taste for it. it. Taste it. it already. I did not drink it already. It's gone. Gone. I'm sorry, but that's, too much that's off. Let's get out of here, man. I wouldn't even pay for it. Keep the change. Come on, man. Come on, hurry up. Stupid. Let's get it on. Francis Ford Coppola's latest effort, The Outsider, starring Matt Dillon, opened nationally on Friday, but the film actually premiered a week earlier. It was a screening similar to many, with stars Patrick Swayze and Matt Dillon, adoring fans, actor-singer Leif Garrett, along with all the hoopla that's normally associated with the premiere of a new movie. The film, based on an Essie hidden novel, is about two rival gangs, the Socials and the Greasers, in a small town in the early 60s. We're going back to the start ourselves in. I got a good chance of being let off easy. It was self-defense, you just said. Tony and Jerry can testify to that. And I we won't say that you helped us. I'll give you back that gun so you won't get in any trouble now. The screening took place not in Hollywood, but in Fresno, California. The students of Lone Star, after having read the book, sent Francis Ford Coppola a letter urging him to make the book into a movie. Now, even when an idea for a film comes from within the Hollywood community, chances are slim that it will make it to the screen. So when Coppola said he was interested, it came as a bit of a surprise. I, when I signed it, I thought, oh, this is so terrific. This is so neat. And then it was really exciting, but then I thought, they're just gonna look at that and say that that's really cute. Oh, nice. Let's that's put it that was cute. That was cute. Okay, let's throw it away. And I just I didn't think when I got a letter in the mail about it, I just went hysterical. I, I thought believe. maybe they just say, Oh, thanks for the letter. Good <laughs> good try, nice. but we're not interested. And um, they've really kept us informed. They've sent us scripts back and pictures and and they've asked us they've asked what we think should be put in and what shouldn't be put in. Yeah. If we think it should be changed, changed, changed a little, or if we want to keep it the same. And if they really involved us. Thank you. You know, we gotta win that fight today. We've gotta get in with those socials. I think every person, every person in, in America or anywhere, it's just such an honest, real thing, you know? And I think that's why it'll, it'll go over big anywhere. Because I, I think these kids, you know, they're honest, you know? It's the way it is. I only wanted to help. I liked you from the start. The way we talked. Wouldn't you try to help me if you thought you could? Sunset from the south side, very good. Yeah, real good. You can see it from the north side, too.
what is up you guys? Today we are in Tulsa, Oklahoma, checking out the 1984 The Outsiders filming locations. I did make a video on this place last year. I'm super excited to be back in Oklahoma itself. It's such a beautiful state. And growing up, this was always one of my favorite, favorite movies. So just to come back here and get another opportunity to film this, it is just amazing and I want to go to more locations than I did in the first video because there was some spots I did not hit but yeah we're gonna get into literally all the locations I can find out here I'm gonna be out here for a few days so this will be real awesome for now we're gonna start off at the theater where Pony Boy walks out which I'm standing directly across the street from but right now we are here at the Circle Theater where that opening shot was filmed and I'm going to show you guys right now. Right there is the theater that C. Thomas Howell, the played Pony Boy, walked out. And he walked right down here where the car pulls up with the Soches and they get jumped. When I stepped out into the bright sunlight from the darkness of the movie house, I had only two things on my mind. Paul Newman walked out and right on. You can see him walk right over here. You could see him clearly standing right here in front of these like glass pillars. And then he walks down the street where the camera follows him down that way. Right on the side of the theater, actually, is a little plaque. Which is really cool. I don't know when this was put up. When I stepped out into the bright sunlight from the darkness of the movie house, I had only two things on my mind. Paul Newman and a ride home. Right now, I am probably standing at the most famous location from this entire movie, and this is the Curtis Brothers house, and this is where a lot of the scenes were filmed in the movie. You can see Steve Randall, played by Tom Cruise, do a flip right over this fence when uh, all the greasers head out to the rumble, and that was a really memorable scene. You can clearly see this uh, arch in the fence in the movie, and that's how you know they never replaced it which is just mind-blowing. So I guess in the past decade, they have really restored this place. And they have so many pieces from the movie like jackets and shirts and stuff like the cast actually wore and it's just so freaking cool and I can't wait to show you guys when I uh, get to get into this place. I absolutely love Tulsa, Oklahoma. I love being out here. It's just such a beautiful place with such a different vibe. It's really amazing. By yourself, you should carry a blade. Oh yeah, that would be a great excuse. So she just cut his neck a little. Here, old man, you know, like a like a big shotty. Here, back to start too big. What I like is the uh, turn hero. Charge with Johnny at manslaughter? Well, I mean, if he recovers. Also says how you saved them kids, pony boy. Had they burned, death hadn't been for you. I only wanted to help. I liked you from the start. It 
it's worth saving those little kids. Their lives are worth more than mine. They have more to live for. I'm gonna miss you guys. I've been thinking about it in that poem. That guy that wrote it. He meant your gold when you're a kid. Like green. When you're a kid, everything's new. Dawn. Like the way you dig sunsets, Bunny. That's gold. Keep it that way. It's a good way to be. I want you to tell Dally to look at one. I don't think he's ever seen a sunset. There's still lots of good in the world. Tell Dally I don't think he knows. Your buddy, Johnny. So tell me about your oldest brother. You never seem to talk about him. What's it tell? He's big in Rose houses. I went up to the school and found the parents in office that I'd like to be an extra. That's me right there. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So anyway, I took my name, address, and phone number, took my picture. So a couple of days later, they called me for to show up at how to be dressed. So blue jeans, black t-shirt, and a motorcycle jacket. And I was in costume. How amazing. So this is my own neighborhood. I moved away in 87 though, but I only live three or four miles away from here. To get the design back on this wall, an artist drew the uh, design, and they made a stencil out of his design, they stenciled the whole wall to get it to look like uh, it did in the movie. He came one day about a little over two months ago, but we weren't open. He came on a Thursday, or only Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But he came with Susie Hinton. He had some business to take care of in Oklahoma City. Did he come behind the barrier? He came up here with Tulsa, and they went to lunch together. They came by the house. And the pictures in the brown. So then they opened the house for Picture frames that are placed on the ground. Last August, Leonardo DiCaprio came in. He came to the gift shop to pay his $10, and Danny O'Connor, the owner, him and Leonardo knew each other in California about 20 years ago. They used to hang out together. Danny saw him, he thought it looked like him, so he asked his girlfriend. He was wearing a COVID mask. She looked at him and said, well, the eyes look like his. So Danny said, well, I'm going to take a chance and ask. So he said, Leo, is that you? And he turns around and saw Danny and said, what are you doing here in Tulsa, Oklahoma? And Danny said, well, I live here now, and I bought the Outsiders house. So he gave him the tour of the house and brought him back to the kitchen where I have my photos. And I told him what I sell them for, 20 bucks a piece, or if you buy three, you get a fourth of three. So anyway, um, he pulled out a, a $100 bill. He said he wanted to spend all of it. I told him my uh, Tom Cruise story that I didn't think Tom Cruise was going to amount to anything because of that bad tooth that he had. Well, that was a fake bad tooth, and I didn't know it. He had already filmed Taps, and he had perfectly looked perfect with his teeth and Taps, but I thought that was his real tooth, and I thought, yeah, this guy's not going to mount anything. I'm not even going to waste my film on him. I've got one picture of him, it's pretty good, and he's with Rob Lowe in that picture. But I just didn't think he was going to mount anything. I don't even think any pictures of it. So then that summer I saw Taps, a little crap. I should have took more pictures of it. Tommy Howell comes more often than any of them. Ralph Macho maybe once or twice. Darren Dalton a couple times. Celebrities came out to North Tulsa tonight to celebrate a Tulsa landmark, the house made famous by the movie The Outsiders. Fox 23's Rick Marinon explains which stars showed up and how even the streets around the house have changed. It's new at 10. It wasn't a block party, but those who live at the corner of North St. Louis and East Independence had plenty to celebrate. I want to thank you guys for being so warm and welcoming in 1982 and so warm and welcoming today. Tulsa City leaders are making it easier for fans of the 1980s beloved film to find the Outsiders House. You're not going to find it on an official address or anything, but what was North St. Louis and East Independence is now Curtis Brothers Lane and the Outsiders Way to help people find where the house actually is.
Returning to Tulsa for the special occasion was Pony Boy Curtis himself, C. Thomas Howell, and Darren Dalton, who played Soch Randy Anderson. But to be able to come back here and, and uh, preserve the home and try to raise money for the museum and, and just meet a lot of the people that were involved in the movies has been great. Howell says he never imagined the film based off the book by local author S.E. Hinton would stay this popular for all these years. It takes a village, man, and that's why we're all here. We all want to give back and we all want to try to preserve this. Fans, some who were extras in the movie, also came out, not just to relive the good old days, but also hope for even better days ahead for the famous Tulsa House. This is awesome. I basically grew up in this area five blocks away, and I was also an extra in The Outsiders. Lip Garrett hadn't been here, or Diane Lynch hadn't been here either, or, or Lip oh, Garrett. Yeah. Tom Cruise ever come back? Tom Cruise never been here either. Rob Lowe came before the museum was open, just about two or three months before the museum opened. So he came in. But that was on, in March, because it, he's, that was his 53rd birthday, and he spent his 18th birthday here making the movie. His birthday is March the 17th, St. Patrick's Day. So he came, he was here making the movie on his birthday. But five, a surprise trip to Tulsa by a movie star on his 53rd birthday. Actor Rob Lowe starred in the film The Outsiders, shot here in, in Tulsa. Today, Lowe, his son, and the author of the book, The Outsiders, toured the home where the movie was filmed. He told Fox 23's J.J. Burton it's the same place he celebrated his 18th birthday. Rob Lowe says it's been several long years since his last visit to Tulsa and 35 years since he first arrived to film the cult classic The Outsiders with Tom Cruise, Patrick Swayze, and Ralph Macchio. If I could go back and tell my... 17 turning 18 year old self on my birthday that I'd be back here at 53 and I'd still be you know doing a job I love I never would have believed it. He brought his son Johnny and the author of the book S.E. Hinton along for the reunion. Oh and the production crew you see over there they're filming a special for the book's 50th anniversary. And they feel like proud and grateful. He credits the film for launching his long and awarded career. He also thanks Tulsa. He says it's like a second home for him. This is amazing to me how much it has stayed exactly the same. As much fun as this trip down memory lane was for Rob, it was even better for the Tulsans who were just driving by to take a look at the Outsiders house. They got a huge surprise. We were riding around and I was like, you guys want to go see the Outsiders house? Because they, they don't know anything about it like we did. So we went past here and I mean, we wanted to pick the luckiest day they was here. The passion with which people feel for the outsiders is something that just shocks me and inspires me every year. In Tulsa, covering news that matters, J.J. Burton, Fox 23 News. That's the way we do things here in Tulsa. All right, the Outsiders House is in the process of being renovated, turned into a museum, as we've told you. We have posted our entire interview with Rob Lowe on Fox23.com. You need to see it. It includes his favorite memories of his time here in Tulsa. He brought that shirt also. He wore that in the movie. And he also signed that town. So Rob Lowe wants his stay go you know, Patrick's nickname at home was Buddy Swayze. He was a little buddy and his dad was a big buddy. And during the making of The Outsiders, Patrick told Rob to call him Buddy. And Rob said, I can never call him Buddy. But I've got a business card of his that says Buddy Swayze. On the night of the premiere, I asked him who did the handstand on the fence rail. He said that was him. I said, well, I got a picture of it. person that did the backflip off that the truck. That was Tom Cruise. That was Tom, Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise did the backflip off the car. Part of I've got a picture of it, too. It was so fast in the movie, yeah. and it was dark. But I've got know, a picture of it, but all you can see is his butt. <laughs> yeah, well, that was fine. He, he flipped off it a second time and hit his head. Oh, wow. <laughs> when, he, when he jumped off of, in the yard, he bumped his head. He gets up holding his back of his head. Check this out, buddy. Ah! And Susie said that he, uh, he bumped his head when he did that. For the second location, we are here at Crutchfield Park. And this is probably one of the most iconic scenes of the movie. This is where Ponyboy and Johnny Cade came after they left the Curtis house 
and they came to this park. Uh, of course, like Soches and a Mustang pulled up. They have since took out the fountain where they tried to drown Pony Boy, and I will show you guys that, but this is exactly where you could probably remember in the movie. They would have been sitting on top of a jungle gym, and it would have been right here, and then you could see a Mustang pull up right in front of them. And this is the exact shot I'm about to show you guys. In the movie, you can see Pony Boy and Johnny sitting on a jungle gym. And I have calculated that it would have been right about here. And then right next to that, the Mustang would have pulled up right about here. And you can clearly see that tree right there on the left and the house behind it in the shot from the movie. Yeah, here you go, Johnny. Uh-oh, look what's coming. This is our territory. I bet they're looking for us. Wanna split? Stay cool. Well, well, This would have been the spot where the jungle gym would have been, so you can kind of make it out if you know where this raised area is. And then the Mustang was right there. Such a great scene. And then the fountain would have been right here. And this is where they tried to drown Pony Boy. And Johnny ended up killing the Soch. They have since removed the fountain because I guess the city of Tulsa didn't like that there was a killing scene filmed in their park. So they ended up removing it, but they put a sprinkler system in and it's actually really beautiful when it goes off. It's such a hot day out today. It's like 105 degrees, but going to these locations is literally so fun. It's like going into the movie itself. It's definitely something I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Just completely amazing. This is actually where Johnny and Pony Boy entered the park. You can see these three houses in the background of the shot as they are walking towards the camera into the park. And for the most part, those houses still look the same. best locations of the entire film. We are here at the Admiral Twin Drive-In, as you see behind me. And uh, this is where probably one of the most iconic pieces of the film was shot, actually. And I'm about to show you guys exactly where the Curtis Brothers Pony Boy snuck into the movie under a hole in the fence, which is still there to this day. So if you actually head behind the drive-in, you'll see some trees and if you just keep walking down this line of trees you'll eventually come to the spot where they snuck into the theater there's like an opening we're gonna come across here in a second here is the opening that I'm almost a hundred percent positive this is the same exact spot in the movie because all the angles and everything match up perfectly but Here's the hole right here. Absolutely insane. And I'll even climb through it. You can almost just see the shot when you're here at this spot. It's crazy, like how Pony Boy starts walking right along here with uh, Johnny. Such an iconic scene. Don't do this.
nice to meet you. But, uh, Jerry, I'm not going back. The last time I was here, I did not look at this building, but I believe this was the concession building that they went in while at the drive-in. You can see them all walk inside and order some popcorn and stuff. Unfortunately, there's not a single window I can look inside on this place. Sure scared Johnny. Johnny's a nervous wreck anyway. He got beat up a few months ago by some social. Is that how he got his scar? Yeah, the guy was wearing a few rings. Yeah. Not all of us are like. It looks about the size it did in the movie. The like Maybe it's not a concession yeah. stand anymore. I have no clue. It just looks really old. It's weird. So I'm pretty sure this would have been the concession stand that they all went inside to get popcorn and everything. From this location we are in Sperry, Oklahoma where the Rexel Drugstore and DX gas station are see the whole entire cast standing or sitting I should say on top of this classic car right in front of this drugstore I'm about to show you guys and the car would have been right here in front of the drugstore with the entire cast sitting on top of it and the store looks exactly the same completely gutted on the inside but it even still has the soda coca-cola prescription sign right there The inside it's completely gutted. The roof is gone. There's not really anything in there. Right down the street, literally like 50 yards, is the DX gas station where they all worked in the movie. Here come the hobos. Hey, soda pop. Hey, I ain't got no cash. Hey, man, anyone buy no with your weapon? Come on, Dally. Give him the money, so. And this, this is one of the spots that has absolutely not changed a single bit since 1984. And it looks exactly the same as it did all those years ago. See, they even have a picture of when the movie was filmed here on the window. Such a crazy spot. Literally looks straight out of the 50s. The pumps have since been removed. I don't know when, but it's definitely been a while. I've heard a lot that they're trying to restore this building and make it look exactly how it looked in the film. I don't know if they're going to reinstall some pumps or um, make something out of this, but it would be really cool if they did, like a little gift shop or something where you could walk inside. That'd be really cool. Well, Sperry, a town where the movie The Outsiders was filmed, is seeing some new signs of life. Uh, recently, the group Upward Sperry restored a popular gas station from the film. Two News Oklahoma senior reporter Justin Ayer explains the push to revitalize Sperry's Outsiders style. You may recognize this DX gas station from the movie. It's where all the greasers were hanging out in the beginning. Now, it's Sperry's main tourist attraction, and it looks exactly the same. Be sure to grab a pop and get gas for 62 cents a gallon next time you're at Sperry's DX gas station. It's what the greasers would do, like these guys. Sure 
restrictions on want to make it look like it's operational. Even though it's not, Upward Sperry President Gary Colson and Outsiders House Executive Director Danny Boy O'Connor are doing what they can to bring Outsiders nostalgia to downtown Sperry. It's really uh, growing. It's al almost like, I don't hate to say, but like a cult following. And uh, they stream through here. And so what that does, it puts Sperry on the map and gets people here. Three years ago, Colson and others started buying downtown buildings with plans to revitalize this sleepy town including this famous building. Behind the Rexel drugstore is where they shot the 52 pickup scene, right about here. But now with this and the success of the Outsiders House Museum in Tulsa, Sperry isn't so sleepy anymore. What's good for Sperry is good for Tulsa and vice versa. Um, you know, they're calling Oklahoma uh, Oakywood now. But Colson envisions Sperry bustling. I do have a club um, that I'm working on more of a, a venue. The old bank lounge on the end is now uh, just about to reopen. Two Airbnbs on top of it. Colson said the ultimate goal is putting Sperry on the map for not only Outsiders fans, but for people just traveling through. In Sperry, Justin Air, 2 News, Oklahoma. The road this is on is actually closed. So I don't have to worry about any cars coming down. It's actually a giant sinkhole right there, which is huge. So this is the inside of the TX gas station. There's really nothing in here at all besides this um, power switcher box. And uh, only one of the windows is intact, two of the windows. Hey, what is up you guys? Today we are on, I believe, South Boston Street or South Boston Avenue. And um, this is the spot where 2-Bit and Pony Boy got picked up by the bus. You know the only thing that keeps Derek from being a social is us. Yeah, I know. Oh. Tonight. I don't like it one bit. You can see this church very clearly in the shot. I'm not exactly sure what angle it was shot from, but it doesn't appear that there is any park benches anymore. All the park benches have been removed. I'm assuming it would have been on that side of the street. Alright guys, so we are here at the Stop and Save, which is one of the final shots of the movie where Matt Dillon's character Dallas robs the gas station from being so angered by uh, Johnny's death. And he robs the gas station at gunpoint and then he runs right out here. So we're actually going to head inside this gas station to see what it looks like today. He would have been in this row. Yeah. Magazines would have been here. Gary the money! I'm so sick of you, push. Take me get out of here. Sorry, man. Alright guys, so unfortunately the shop owner kicked us out, so we're just going to head to uh, where Daly died instead. That was unfortunate, didn't really expect that to happen, but yeah, let's go head to the street where uh, Dallas uh, passed away. Alright guys, so we were at one of the last locations from the film. This is one of the most memorable locations of the whole entire movie. This is where Dallas Winston gets shot, right here at this intersection. You would have seen him running right there 
over that grass, you can see that stop sign in the shot very well. And he would have been right in the middle of that intersection there where he got shot down by the police. And it still looks pretty much the same. If you know where you're looking and you know what you're looking for, this is where Matt Dillon would have fallen right onto the pavement and died in the Outsiders. Pretty crazy. Like I said, you can see this stop sign very well in this shot. If you come out here, that's a telltale sign that you're at the right intersection of East Jasper Street. Alright everyone, we are here at one of the final locations I'm going to be doing for this movie and this is the rumble scene. The very famous rumble scene where all the greasers and all the soches come out and they all just have one big fight and this has always been one of those scenes that I think about when I think about the movie The Outsiders so this is really cool to be here and just coming to all these places really just immerses you in the actual film itself if anybody is in Tulsa Oklahoma and you love The Outsiders I 1000% recommend that you come check this place out because you will not be disappointed so this is the park where the Soches and Greasers would have had the big rumble. You can see there's not really anything here. I mean, they added a little uh, playground area over there, but for the most part, it would have been very open field like this in the movie. Just insane knowing that all those actors, actresses were standing right in this area, including Francis Ford Coppola. Alright guys, so I wanted to do the church from the church scene that they burnt down in the movie when uh, Matt Dillon told Pony Boy and Johnny to get the train to Windricksville. That church was actually in a city called Windricksville, more commonly known as Skiatook. I was actually able to talk to a extra from the movie, his name was Joe. He actually told me that the church is now underwater. They added a bunch of water in that area and you can't even get to where the church was standing anymore. It's completely gone. Anything that was left behind is gone, unfortunately. But um, yeah, that was just cool to figure out so I didn't waste my time going out there. But anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I filmed this over the course of a couple days and um, it was really a lot of fun. And I really hope you guys enjoyed my adventure, enjoyed this video. Enjoyed all the uh, crazy cool edits I put into it. And I can't wait to catch you guys next week. So as always, stay spooky and peace out. When you grow up in a tight-knit neighborhood like ours, you get to know each other real well. I'm not saying that either socials or abusers are better. That's just the way things are. Now, I'd like to say a few words about the rumble tonight. What's going on? 
He started out under on the track at the first punch, and then you had you had all the rain. These poor kids, it was so cold. When we would turn off the rain machines, you could just see the steam coming off of Tom and Patrick and all those kids. Remember moments that I shared with Diane Lane after seeing the movie that um, I never really remembered before. She would recall things that I'd said to her, and, and of course I would deny them because, you know, at 14 I had the biggest crush you could have on, on a young girl, and I never wanted her to know that, but I'm sure she did. The night we shot here <laughs> was freezing cold, and when Tommy says, man, I'm freezing, freezing. he really meant it. <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> Shut up. Every once in a while it still plays at this theater. Actually, the actors, Rob and Tommy, were very close during the movie shoot, too. That was a rough night shoot because Matt had the little gunshot squibs taped to his bare skin since he left the hospital with just a jacket on. And when those squibs went off, it hurt. I think Matt did a great job as Dallas. We went out on the streets of Tulsa and go to you know, the drugstore and shoplift and do all the stuff and we'd get in trouble. And Francis was there the whole time filming it. Videotape was a very new thing. He had, which was, you know, not in a, a great part of the neighborhood and I don't remember it having heat. Um, he wanted us to cook a meal together and I don't cook. Tommy Howell doesn't cook and Swayze doesn't cook, so that was a disaster. And he and Susie Hinton sat on that couch and we were in character for hours and hours and hours on end. And finally, we were sort of looking at each other, the actors going, is this ever gonna end? Francis was eager for me to spend the night in jail, which I wasn't, of course, so interested in doing. But like, yeah, you know, maybe Dallas, because he's, he's been in the reformatory. You should go spend the night in jail. I was like, okay, Francis, why don't you go spend the night in jail? I mean, I spent time in character, sleeping out at night in the cold, wrapped in newspaper. And walking on a piece of blue tarp that would then turn into a park or wherever we were. The best part that came out of that was the fact that we were able to draw upon personal experiences with each other as actors. And then when we would refer to moments on film, we could recall that experience for real. I believe you should work very sensually with actors. Actors like it in the early stages of rehearsal. Usually I have a whole table full of props because uh, they just want to go up and get some. Then when you see it, if you like it, you encourage it. Oh, the fire is on! We're in the rehearsal process, ready to put on the show. There would be scheduled sort of gaming and, and uh, comp competition between the Soches and, and the Greasers. Every weekend we would have these rival uh, matches, be it football, soccer, basketball. There was a lot of competition. We wouldn't dare. And I remember one afternoon we were gonna play a flag football match. The doorbell rang and, and somebody was standing there with some brand new sweats, drawstring gray sweats with canvas converse and a t-shirt that said Greasers on it and they handed me a really lovely plastic binder for my script. And it had The Outsiders and my name on it. So we all scramble off to the park and, and we go up and we've got our gray sweats and our t-shirts on and we look over and here come the gang of socias, all in their beautifully colored button down snap sweat jumpsuits and their leather high top sneakers and their leather bound script covers with their names on them. And I remember that just eating at us, and we kicked the holy hell out of them that day. Yeah, how? All right! Woo! Me being a social, him being a greaser, can relate to this very much so because the, the greasers got less per diem than the socials and got better. I think the, uh, the socials got better hotel rooms. That's hardly the case. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. But it was exactly like that, and he's a young boy and he's still learning. It was good, it was healthy. It was very healthy <laughs> to exercise yeah. that ability. You and Garrett are good friends today. Really? <laughs> I love this kid. <laughs> There were times when it got almost a little over the top, like it was like, hey, whoa, you know, you guys, you guys really are actors, you, know, you don't hate each other. We spent like three nights shooting that scene, 
and I got deathly ill. So it wasn't the actual dunking that was rough, it was building up to it. I mean, there, there was some grabbing and some, a bit of a fight going on and struggling, and Francis didn't want it to look easy. He wanted us to look like we were getting away. And, and I didn't make it easy on Leif, you know? I mean, I tried very hard, and, and, and Francis came up to me and said, do not let him put you in that water, period. My struggling consisted of a few blows to Leif here and there, but they got me in, and uh, in the long run, you know, they dunked me pretty good, and Leif, Leif got even with me. Hi, you guys got along great. This is both of you. I knew that. You guys were buddies in the movie, huh? No, we weren't no, buddies. We, weren't we were enemies. No. I um, I tried to drown him, and his buddy stabs you, kills me. <laughs> How early in the movie? <laughs> Very first two minutes of the movie. This guy dies. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a big role. <laughs> I am Bob the Social. We'll be seeing much of me later on. <laughs> that's it. I'm out of the film, you know? So. <laughs> no, but that's... No, we, we're friends. We're friends, you know, off screen. But during the movie, we're, we're at complete enemies. The book itself and the, and the movie. Um, why has it got such a universal message? I don't know. I, I personally think that, you know, no one... Because no one... As much as it may seem that we hate each other, as him being a greaser and me being a soch, we never really hated each other. It was just the circumstances that put us into that. It was just the thing. It was just the thing. The socials were supposed to hate the greasers. But, you know, no one really, you know, and it came through in the end in the court scene when Darren Dalton, who, uh, who plays the other soch, my buddy, um, you know, it says, you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't Johnny's fault that uh, he killed Bob. It was in self-defense. Yeah. And it was, it was all circumstances that these guys are in the situation that they're in. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's fun. Wow. Um, I'd like to thank everybody. <laughs> um, this is my first experience for this, too, you know, so I don't know what to say. But I would like to say, um, there's some friends out there that I love very dearly. Chuck, Mary, Jeff, and Marty Olsen. I'm glad you're being here. I love you all. Um, I hope you like the movie. That's all I can say. I mean, we all worked very hard, and I wish Francis could be here right now. We love you all. Thank you. This is particularly uh, felt strongly about Matt from the, the earliest day of testing or even interviewing. I remember Francis coming up to me and saying, uh, you can go home now. He come, coming up to me and sending me home early. And I remember thinking, oh, you blow it, man. You didn't get the job, there's no way. And I remember uh, going and, and calling uh, my manager from Grand Central saying, I blew it, I didn't get it, I know it, and being very depressed about it. Only to find out that the reason he sent me home was because he, he knew he was gonna cast me in the film. Later on, I discovered that. Of course, it was a highlight for me. All right, here you go. This is a bug. You guys aren't exactly the same size, but you know, it's dry. Hey, it's, it's gonna be cold where you're going. This character that Matt played had been in uh, New York City and uh, had come to Oklahoma from New York, so he had kind of the street smarts, the street toughness. Now, Matt is a died in the wool New Yorker. We would like to think he was, but he wasn't really a tough New York boy. He was incredibly uh, handsome, a, a kind of mean toughness, but you still like him. Are you a real Randy? When he dies, I mean, you, you cared deeply that, of that loss because of Matt's performance. I'm Diane Lane. Diane Lane. Well, Diane Lane had been acting since she was, you know, six. <laughs> Have you ever uh, been in love with somebody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The most important I thought was the first time I fell in love, or I thought I was in love. You know, she was just turning 16. Mm -hmm. It was from a kid to a, a real teenager. Leaving on the guy just saying, look at me, look at me. Now whatever you're gonna do to make him look at you. I don't know. <laughs> she was my cherry choice from the get-go. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Ralph. Ralph, doing it this way is like you're starting. Ralph was uh, was small. There's a kind of uh, 
toughness and a kind of sweetness at the same time. Okay. Kids have long hair. Why do they all cut them? See if you can find the humor. No, you. Plus, Ralph uh, had real acting chops. He was a little pro. Okay, anytime. One thing I clearly remember is anytime I was asked to read a different role, I was sort of bummed that, uh, well, maybe I won't get the Johnny part, you know, because I wanted to play. So I got to read Pony Boy. I think I read two bits once or twice, and I was too young and frail to be Dallas or anything. But I just wanted, I was specifically wanted uh, uh, to have the opportunity to play Johnny, and so, uh, so it, was, it was an exciting journey. You are living in a vacuum, Pony, and you're going to have to cut it out. I was kind of a, a fan of Patrick's. I had seen him in some cheesy movie, uh, Roller Boogie, or some roller skating dance movie. I found him very interesting, and I arranged to uh, meet him. Uh, he was older. He conveyed older than the other boys. That's all Sandy wanted was to give it back. And point of fact, he was a lot older, but he was able to play just the right amount of older. I never had a thing to do with her parents. Pony Boy uh, was the most difficult part to cast because uh, he tells the story. Fix breakfast. Let's start off. Okay. The first one up has to fix breakfast, and the other two do breakfast. I'll never forget seeing Tom Al for the first time. I walked into uh, the stage, and the auditions were already happening, and Tommy was playing Pony Boy. And they sent everybody back, and Tommy stayed. And then other people played their parts, and they sent everybody back, and Tommy stayed. And then more people came up and played different parts and Tommy stayed. And I went, that's Pony Boy. All three of us like chocolate cake for breakfast. Mom and Dad allowed it with ham, never allowed it with ham and eggs. But he had such so gravitas for a kid of his age. He has such weight. I just can't stand it. Who you guys find anymore? Francis and I both knew Emilio uh, a little bit. Sometimes I just have to get out. Marty Sheen had been our star on Apocalypse Now and had been in the Philippines. And the kids were out there a lot of the time. So we had known Emilio uh, from all those months in the Philippines. I think it was a great choice because uh, he, uh, he had a lot of droll humor to him. You guys six every night. <laughs> Rosie Palm and her five daughters. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, we're going to be late. Tom Cruise, you could see his talent from Taps, and uh, he took um, this testing process very, very seriously and was very intense. I remember him not so much being part of the boys playing around with each other between, between tests, between takes. I think he was mooding up, getting into his character. He takes his acting very, very seriously, and prepares very, very seriously. Try one that's like a seasoned gangster. Gangster. Like Humphrey Bogart. Take care, kid. I want to try this again. No quick. In a sense, I was only interested in, you know, the magic they were going to make there reading the scene. I didn't realize that they were all <laughs> nervous, you know, of course. Very simple. You tend to want to go a little more advanced. Okay. You've got to learn slowness. Okay. That's why I'm playing you this little music. To me, it's all fun, and of course, to them, it was life and death career. <laughs> we had a wealth of talent to choose from there, and we just uh, made gut decisions on who we chose. Casting is, is the most fun of, of the movie making process. The casting period, and when you make your decisions, it's all optimism. I guess we're different. Sure. Maybe they are. I can never not get totally involved in the casting of a movie. It's just uh, in my DNA. I'm Patrick Swayze. I play Derry. Uh, Daryl Curtis, uh, the perennial older brother, who I just realized seeing this for the first time since the movie came out is uh, is is a kid himself uh, being stuck in a position of responsibility that he didn't ask for and, does, and has no idea uh, what to do with. Uh, could have had a life or a career. He was a, f uh, he was a jock uh, football star and could have gone on, but uh, life wasn't going to let him because uh, he had no money to go on. I'm Diane Lane, and I play Cherry Valance. This is, this is great. I'm so glad that Francis arranged this because I never got to see... Uh, the earlier footage either 
and I, I'm just excited to see all the different changes that are going to come up. It takes sometimes a different perspective to fully appreciate it and, and not being one of those young kids anymore, I can fully appreciate this film and all its potential, more than when it first came out and I was still a kid watching it. Ralph Macchio played Johnny Cade, one of my uh, uh, personal favorite characters I ever played. Um, I read this book when I was a, when I was uh, in gosh, seventh grade, so this is sort of full circle coming to fruition and getting a chance to see this extra footage is uh, is exciting for me. I'm Rob Lowe. I play Soda Pop Curtis. I turned 18 years old on the set of The Outsiders, my first movie. Hi, I'm Matt Dillon. Uh, played the character of uh, Dallas Winston in the film The Outsiders, which we shot uh, 21 years ago in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I directed my first short film a few years ago, and they asked me how I wanted the credits, and I wanted these big, gorgeous letters sliding across the screen to a sunset, and I don't know where I'd seen it before. <laughs> now I remember. I'm supposed to say something, right? Okay, this is the first time I've seen the movie except for looping it and doing all the stuff involved, seeing each little piece of the film. It blew me away. I'm a little emotional right now after, you know, this being the first time seeing it, but, uh... Jesus, I don't know, you know? It, it touched me a lot. It touched me. It made me feel what I felt when I was a teenager growing up, which I had forgotten. And I don't care what anybody says. The reason S.E. Hinton's book is such a success is the first time that a teenager wrote, wrote about the pain or difficulty or whatever you want to call it growing up, growing up as an adolescent. For the first time, it was from a teenage point of view rather than an adult point of view, and it really hit home. <laughs>